This great feast that we celebrate today is, was originally a, a feast of the dedication of a great basilica to St. Michael in Italy. Unfortunately, that, that church is, it doesn't exist anymore, but we still have this feast. But on this feast, the church honors not only this, this church that was built, but St. Michael himself specifically, and also all of the angels in heaven. That's why the church gives this feast the greatest solemnity possible, the highest rank that it has for a feast, which is a double of the first class. Because we, have, we are honoring all of the angels in, in the heavenly choirs. We only have a few feast days for the angels during the year, and this is the main one and, and the highest one. St. Michael is the leader of the heavenly army, the name of Michael means, who is like to God? The reason he's called this is because, as we know, God created all the angels in a state of innocence, just like he did with mankind. And then God asked them to serve him. And the highest angel, Lucifer, said that he wouldn't serve God. He wanted to be like God. He wanted to be... His own God is what he meant to do what he wanted to do. But St. Michael said, who is like God? And that was the battle cry of the first conflict in history. When the good angels cast the, the devils out of heaven and cast them into hell. And so St. Michael is considered the general of the angels in their fight against the devils. There are several mentions of St. Michael in Scripture. He's mentioned by another angel, St. Gabriel, in the book of Daniel. St. Gabriel appeared to the prophet Daniel in a vision. And Daniel gives a, an amazing description of this vision in chapter 10 of what St. Gabriel looked like. He said, I lifted up my eyes and I saw and behold... A man clothed in linen, and his, linen, his loins were girded with the finest gold, and his body was like the chrysolite, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes like a burning lamp, and his arms and all downwards even to the feet like the appearance of glittering brass, and the voice of his word like the voice of a multitude." This shows us the glory, not just of St. Gabriel, who he's describing, but of all of the angels. And he describes his fear and astonishment at this vision. And there were other people around him at the time, even though they weren't able to see St. Gabriel himself. They saw the, the light from this apparition, and they just fled in fear. And Daniel himself collapsed on the ground with fear and terror. But St. Gabriel encouraged him, and he told him that he and St. Michael were going to help the Jews leave their captivity under the Persians. They had been slaves under the Persians for many years at this point, but now these two mighty angels would make it happen that they would be allowed to go home. So that shows us their power and their protection of us. The very next chapter in Daniel, we hear about St. Michael again in a prophecy about the Antichrist and the end of the world. It says, At that time shall Michael rise up, the great prince, who standeth for the children of thy people. And a time shall come, such as never was from the time the nations began, even until that time. And at that time, Thy people shall be saved, everyone that shall be found written in the book. And from the rest of this context, it's clear that this is a prophecy about the end times of the world, the reign of the Antichrist and how St. Michael will fight against him. There's a very similar prophecy that is repeated in the book of the Apocalypse when it says that at the end of time there will be a great battle between St. Michael and Satan, just as there was in the beginning of the world. And it says that St. Michael will win at the end of the world, just like he did at the beginning. 
This is a very impressive and very encouraging text for us. This this description of, of the the battle between the, the good and the bad angels in the beginning of the world. It says there was a great battle in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and they prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent who is called the devil, and Satan who seduceth the whole world, and he was cast unto the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. So it says that angels were, the evil angels were cast onto the earth, and unfortunately we can see the evidence of that all around us today. So every time we hear about St. Michael, the archangel, it's always in the context of him being a great warrior and a great leader of the heavenly army of angels fighting for God. This is his role. And because of this, he's, of course, a very popular saint. And he's always represented as a soldier wearing armor and, and standing on the back of the devil whom he has pinned to the ground. And he's always holding a sword or a spear. And he's always about to, to stab the devil or, or chop his head off, it looks like, in the image. And we can't really think of St. Michael in any other way than this. There's almost one sort of universal image of him that you see everywhere that, that no one has been able to improve on. And this beautiful image of him is encouraging to us, and and that's why they're so popular. But sometimes when we look at this image, we might think to ourselves, why is St. Michael only holding up the sword? Why isn't he stabbing the devil to death? We wish the artist who made that image had portrayed instead what happened just half a second later after St. Michael has has chopped his head off. But we have to remember that, first of all, this is symbolic. Angels don't have bodies. They don't wear armor, and they don't fight with swords or spears. But they do fight in a very real sense. When angels are trying to bring us to heaven, and the the devils are trying to bring us down to hell... There is a struggle. They are working against each other. And each side is is trying as hard as they can. And the angels can try very hard at whatever they they want to do. And St. Michael is the leader of the angels that, that protect us. And he fights for us. And that is why the church gives him such great honor. But that image of St. Michael is actually more accurate the way it is than if it showed Satan dead. Because Satan is not dead. He is defeated, certainly, by God and the holy angels. But he's very much alive. And even though he is under the complete control of St. Michael, as we see in the picture, he can still hurt us. If you look at the, the... the archetypal statue of St. Michael, you can see that if that were a real scene, anyone who would be foolish enough to get within arm's reach of the devil would still be able to get hurt. The devil would still claw him. St. Michael is holding the devil down for us, but we have to keep our distance from him. And that is the problem. We tend to go up and, and poke the devil in that condition, and he ends up hurting us very badly. And what I mean by this is that we tend to to be careless about occasions of sin, situations or circumstances where we know the devil is there and we can, they'll tempt us, but we don't stay away from them. We, We tend to think that the devil has been killed, that he's, he, he can't hurt us anymore. And so when we get too close to temptation, that's when we fall. We shouldn't do that. If we would keep our distance and avoid occasions of sin, avoid uh, 
places and, and people and entertainments, whatever it is that, that we see has led us into sin in the past, we have to avoid it or we will fall again. St. Michael can't protect us if we walk right up to the devil, and that's our own fault. I want to close today with a little story about the devil. In the Middle Ages, monasteries were sort of like hotels for poor people or pilgrims, travelers. And poor people could always go and ask for alms at, at the monastery door. So the monastery door was a busy place and one of the monks was assigned to answer the door to whoever knocked and provide them with what they needed. So one day this monk who had this job heard a knock on the door and he opened it and he saw a huge man standing outside. And he asked him what he wanted and the man said, I am Satan. He said, you know, I really don't appreciate the way human beings are always talking about me. He said, every time something goes wrong, you blame me. Every time you get mad at something, you curse at me, or you curse at my home, which is hell. And you give me a very bad reputation, and I'm, I'm getting tired of this. And the monk was very surprised, but he said, of course we blame you. You are constantly leading people into sin, and sin is what causes all of the problems in the world. You led Adam and Eve into sin. That was original sin, and all of our problems started from there. Why should we not blame you? And the devil said, I would not have much power at all if people didn't constantly put themselves in my power. God's grace is far more powerful than anything I could ever do to persuade people to commit sin. And if people only used the means of grace and stayed away from the snares that I lay for people, there would be nothing I could do to them. So when people fall into sin, they have no one to blame but themselves. And then he disappeared. And it is true. We shouldn't blame the devil. We can only blame ourselves when we commit sin. Today, let us ask St. Michael to do what he does best and what he loves to do so much, which is to protect us from the devil, which means to protect us from falling into sin. And when we feel ourselves tempted to sin, we should think of that image of him and we should realize that the devil has lost why should the devil defeat us? We, it is the worst thing in the world to lose to someone who has already lost himself. But we shouldn't rely on our own strength because we don't have any strength of our own. We have to rely on the protection of God and of St. Michael and the holy angels. And we have to stay out of reach of temptation because if we put ourselves into temptation, we have already given up. So let us honor St. Michael today, place ourselves under his protection and that of all of the holy angels, and they will see us safely home to be with God and with them for all eternity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.